Welcome back to Emmons. I'm Jeff, one of the managers here at Emmons. We're here to talk today about closing your pond and getting it ready for the winter. Our main goal for winterizing the pond is to keep a hole in the ice so the gases escape and our fish don't suffocate it. I have a few different ways that we can accomplish that. One of the easiest ways is to put an air pump on there, especially if you've got a pond that's overstocked or has a lot of fish or bigger fish. We want to help purge those gases out of the system by bubbling up and pushing them out. It's important to winterize your pond because we want to make sure your fish are going to be able to make it through the winter without being fed over the course of the next six months or so. And to help me talk about winterizing our pond today is the owner, Steve. Come on over, Steve. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Steve, as Jeff just introduced. The first change that's going to happen as we get into fall is you'll be changing your feeding. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, there is summer food and there's what they call a, a autumn spring food. Big difference being is that your, your colder water foods are a weak germ base and are designed to be more digestible. When the water temperature changes, the fish's digestive system changes. So that's where we come up with uh, different brands, have different terminology for it. This is one of our favorites from Blue Ridge, which is where we get our, a lot, all our fish from. It's a farm down in North Carolina. They have what they call their cool water wheat. Very popular brand here, Tetra, has what they call their spring and fall diet. All of these foods that have that terminology are designed to be fed in that interim period that, as a, as a general rule, will start from about mid-September and continue until about the first of November. With variations depending on our, weather, our, our fall and our weather, it's all contingent on water temperatures. It doesn't hurt maybe to have a, have a pond thermometer that you can monitor that a little bit. Not everybody does, and most of most people that have done it for any amount of time can tell how the weather is changing. But from about the 1st of November till there again in the spring, you won't be feeding your fish. They're going to go into a dormancy stage. They're not going to be grabbing the food. They're not going to be able to digest it properly. But in that interim, for about six weeks at the end of the season, and jumping ahead to spring, and when you start feeding your fish till about the 1st of June or so, this is the ideal food to be feeding your fish. So our next step is when the water starts getting colder, obviously trees are going to start changing and losing leaves. We want to try to keep those out of there to keep less buildup and debris in the pond that help build up those gases in the winter that we're trying to avoid. So one of the best ways to do it is to get some netting over the pond. Um, it's easy just to stretch it over the pond. But if there's a way you can arch it with some PVC poles or stretch it or hang it from a tree, it makes it better making like a tent or a canopy so when the leaves fall on your netting, it doesn't just settle into the pond and hold the leaves on top of the pond in the water. So keep that in mind when you're trying to stretch the netting over your pond. When the leaves are done and you're done with your final cleanup, the netting should come off and not be on for the winter because ice and snow will just destroy it and drag it into the pond. So now that you've got your pond netted, all our leaves are down, you're doing your fall cleanup and you're about ready to take your netting off. You also ideally should disconnect your pump and turn your system off for the winter. Some people leave them running but you take an awful lot of risk of a pump clogging up over the winter or ice dams and you lose water in your pond and you may burn out your five or six hundred dollar pump. So we suggest disconnecting that and getting rid of that and that's a great time to get your air pumps hooked on on those ponds and Steve will talk to you about our different air pumps we can use. Um. We have pumps in every size, okay? Some pe a lot of people will have smaller ponds. If you look at our pond right here, it's only about a 700 gallon pond, not necessarily considered a big pond. But we have pumps in every size for different, for different size ponds. Jeffrey's holding a small, one of our smaller pumps that runs on very little, all of these run on very little electricity. They're air pumps, they're not water pumps. Um, so we have that we can start with this or go to something that's a little bit more I hate to use the word industrial, but heavy duty, okay? But even this one here that, that is a big pump for a larger pond is only going to run you about 60 watts to run it. So there's nothing wrong with just setting these up and letting these run. They should. When we get into the warmer weather, the oxygen level in our ponds decreases. And there's nothing wrong with leaving a pump running year-round. If you own it, you might as well run it. As you can see, we have over here on the pump, that, that, we have our pump that's just running all the time. And now that you've got the air pump in there, which certainly you can get that in earlier than later, um, you can also supplement that with your de-icer. 
So over the course of the winter, as things get really cold, that bubbling hole in the top may close up a little bit. That's where it's nice to have the de-icer in there to make sure we melt that hole and keep that hole open so the air pump can keep forcing the gases out. Just like we talked about with the air pumps, we have the icers in different sizes for different for different ponds. Um, the one Jeffrey here is holding is a 300 watt, which we would generally use on a smaller pond. And being only 300 watts, some people might just plug this in and leave it for the season along with their air pump. This one here that I'm holding is a thousand watts. It's going to be fairly cost prohibitive to just plug this in at the beginning of winter and leave it running. So you want to leave your cord accessible. And like Jeffrey had just mentioned, Plug this in as needed. Your air is going to do most of the work for most of the winter, but when we get into those January weeks where we're going to zero and below zero, your hole, as Jeffrey said, is going to start to close up, and it's important that we have this to open it back up. The whole key is, is that we need the gases to escape. We need that hole left open. Okay, folks, well, I'm going to let Jeffrey finish up, um, but that, that pretty much covers everything. Um, for those of you that have seen our website before, I know I've just disappointed the cameraman and not giving you many bloopers here, but I'm getting better at this. And Jeffrey, take it, take it over. Remember to visit our website and we're as close as the phone if you need us. So when you're ready, come down with your size of your pond and your quick measurements so we make sure we get the right size for everything you need. We have everything here, so when you're ready, come see us, we'll take care of you. We want your fish to make it through the winter. We want you to enjoy your pond. Come down and see us when you get a chance. Thank you. The great thing about Emmons, we have the expertise to pull it all together, get you with the right equipment and the right setup for what you need. We're here for customer service. We want to help you do things right and help you find what you need.